Grace Berger and Mackenzie Holmes did what stars are supposed to do on Wednesday to lead IU to a victory and help Terry Morin make history in progress. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Hoosiers. I am your host, Jacob Rood. I want to thank you for making us your first listen every single day. We are your one-stop shop for everything IU Athletics. It was a big win on Wednesday night for the Indiana women's basketball team, led by Grace Berger and uh, Mackenzie Holmes. But the more important story is the Hoosiers win 83-72 to over a ranked fighting Illini team is it made Terry Morin the winningest coach in Indiana women's basketball history. She now sits at 189 wins. She has long been the best coach in IU women's basketball history. This is just kind of another uh, feather in the hat. She has completely turned this program around and taking them to heights previously unforeseen. And Wednesday was a shining example of how far Indiana has come. They matched their best start in program history. They're 17-1. and one. They did it in pretty dominant fashion. It wasn't necessarily easy at times. The Hoosiers started pretty slow. They fell behind 19-10 to 10 early on. But then from about midway through the first quarter until about midway through the fourth quarter, a span of about three quarters, it was completely Indiana. On the road against a Illinois team that has more than proven itself capable, IU just controlled that game. They were up. Uh, they went on a 27-12 to 12 run to head into the uh, half up extended that lead. They looked like they were about to run away with this game. Uh, I The lead touched, I think, as high as uh, about 14, 16 points, somewhere around there. It looked like uh, the Hoosiers were set. It was a 16-point game with eight minutes left, 71-55, after a Grace Berger jumper. And it felt like it was kind of going to be a formality the rest of the way. Indiana blew the game open in the third quarter and looked to be cruising in the fourth quarter. Credit to Illinois. They fought back. They made it a game. They got it down to as little as eight points. Hoosiers called a timeout. I believe it was a 74-66 game with uh, 326 left. Um it was 71-64, actually. It was a seven-point game. Hoosiers call timeout. Mackenzie Holmes gets an and one. Makaira Cook goes down and scores. But then Chloe Moore McNeil gets an and one, fouls out the Illini's leading scorer. And I don't want to say it was done and dusted at that point, but the Hoosiers were in the clear after that. Grace Berger made some free throws. Chloe Moore McNeil made some free throws. Sydney Parrish iced the game with a three pointer in the final seconds and Indiana picks up another really big road win. McKenzie Holmes utterly dominant 30 points on 12 of 20 shooting 10 rebounds, two blocks, six steals in this one. She was incredible in 35 minutes for the Hoosiers. (laughs) This is a legitimate. I can't keep saying this enough. She's a national player of the year contender Absolutely a Big Ten player of the year contender. There's a lot of talk about Caitlin Clark. She's kind of the flashier player, and not none of this is meant as any sort of backhanded compliment. Uh, she's a very talented player, but Mackenzie Holmes has just been statistically better this season. She should be the front runner for the Big Ten player of the year, and she should be right up there with anybody else for the national player of the year conversation. She's routinely giving Indiana something close to 30 and 10. Uh, Jeremy Gray, the the uh, announcer for or at Assembly Hall, obviously does work at the athletic office. 
about once a week, you can get 30 and 10 from McKenzie Holmes. That's not normal. So it is remarkable what she is doing this season. And Wednesday was another one of those 30 and 10s. Grace Berger was right there with her. She might not have done as much statistically, though she had 18 points, six rebounds, three assists. Uh, she struggled a bit with turnovers, had six turnovers, six of IU's 10, but played 37 minutes. I've said it time and again, it's, it's not just what she does statistically. It's the poise she plays with. When uh, Illinois went on that run late, it was Grace that got things back on track and helped the Hoosiers steady the ship, especially very late in the game. Made sure the Hoosiers ran clock, didn't rush things, and executed down the stretch. But Grace was immense. The two of them had 40 points through the first three quarters. They finished with a combined 48 points on 19 of 30 shooting. That's what your stars do. That's what you need them to do in these types of games. That's what your stars do. They were phenomenal on the night. Yarden Garzon continues to be incredible. Again, it's hard to overstate what she's doing as a freshman on a top five, top 10 team in the country. 13 points, three rebounds, uh, was three of six from three, 36 minutes. Remarkable from her. The Hoosiers made it a point to get to the line, especially early on. First half, they shot 14 free throws to Illinois 7. They finished with 24 to Illinois 15. That was one of the difference makers. They outscored them 46 to 40 in the paint as well. Um, but it was just, as always, the defense. Indiana scored 1.2 points per possession. They hold Illinois to 1, uh, 1 1.04, but if you kind of eliminate that, if you take those middle three quarters, basically, that we discussed, they were suffocating defensively. So it was the recipe, the ingredients that we've seen for Indiana all season long. It culminates in a win, a huge road win. Uh, It. The Hoosiers are right there in the thick of the Big Ten race. As we said, each one of these games is going to be super important. Iowa flirted with Esther and almost lost against Michigan State on Wednesday in their game. That Michigan State loss for Indiana doesn't look nearly as bad. Michigan State's held their own with Ohio State, with uh, Michigan, with Iowa now. So that's a good team. Uh, that the Hoosiers lost to. So it, it's neck and neck. The Hoosiers are going to have another big one next week against Ohio State. They'll have a game b- uh, before that. We'll talk about that in tomorrow's episode. But tonight we celebrate a big win. Terry Morin being the win- winningest coach in program history. Hats off to her. Everything she's done for this program is immeasurable, and she deserves all the accolades, all the praise she's going to get uh, for for this accomplishment. So let's talk about the men's basketball team, see if they can replicate this feat tomorrow, also on the road, also in the State Farm Center. We'll preview that game here in just a moment. Bet Online, though, is your number one source for sports betting info, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, whether it's um, NFL playoffs, whether it is college basketball, whether it is NBA, whether it is soccer, whatever it is, they've got it all at betonline.net. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. The Hoosiers men's team is plus seven for uh, Thursday's game. So, I don't know where you fall on that. I don't know if you want to kind of hedge against your happiness and bet on an Illinois win or bet on Illinois to cover, but just throwing that out there, I don't feel great about this for Indiana. Uh, Plus seven feels fair considering kind of the larger sample size of what we've seen from the Hoosiers of late. If anything about that tickles your fancy, you can head on over to Bet Online and use the website or your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. Big thanks to you guys for making us your first listen every single day or making us your 
uh, first view, I guess, if you're watching us on YouTube, if you're joining us for the live stream, let me know your guys' thoughts on Terry Morin on the men's team. Uh, type it down in the chat. We'll bring it up on the screen uh, as we go. But for your second listen, once you're done here, check out the brand new Locked On College Basketball podcast. Everything you need to know about the college basketball season all in one place. Plus hear from big name experts, coaches, insiders, and players. Locked on College Basketball, available on YouTube, wherever you guys get podcasts. The men's team looking to continue its newfound form tonight, Thursday, uh, whenever you're listening to this, against Illinois, also on the road. It's going to be a tough test. Uh, Tip-off is set for 8.30 p.m. at the State Farm Center, which honestly I only just learned is not assembly hall anymore and it hasn't been that for a decade but in my head i just when you find when i found out it was assembly hall i thought it was the most ridiculous thing ever and it just kind of stuck so the state farm center this game will be on fs1 it's been an interesting season for illinois uh they started the year nine and five they had sky clark leave the program I'm sure that is probably what most people have seen of late for this Illinois team. I'm not going to, I don't really know the circumstances. I know there were rumors out there. I'm not diving into any of those. It was just simply announced on January 6th. He was leaving the program indefinitely. I'm not certain if or when he'll be back, but since he's uh, left the program or stepped away from it, left isn't the, the correct term. He stepped away. It's not, kind of a permanent thing. Illinois is 4-0, though, since then. So I don't know if it will, if it's simply the schedule or if it's um, just kind of rallying around each other since then. But after starting 0-3 in the Big Ten, they have won four straight conference games. Uh, they beat Wisconsin at home. The Hoosiers just saw them. They beat Nebraska on the road. The Hoosiers have seen them. They beat Michigan State at home. Indiana will see them this upcoming weekend. And they beat Minnesota, who the Hoosiers will also see coming up. Now, granted, based on Ken Palm, those are four of the five uh, weakest teams in the Big Ten. So if there was ever a time you were going to go on a run, it would be against those four teams. The Hoosiers have played some of those teams and not gone on a run, though. So uh, hats off to Illinois for kind of turning things around amid all this, but it has been a little bit of a more favorable stretch. Last time these two teams met was the Big Ten tournament, as I'm sure everybody here remembers. The memorable run the Hoosiers had, they knock off number one Illinois, um, number one in the Big Ten tournament, 65 to 63 what a game that was it it was hairy it was it took a defensive stop late some free throws but IU hung on in that one the interesting thing of note is basically there's like one holdover from that team Coleman Hawkins is about the only person uh that played in that game that is still on the team there has been a lot of change on this roster. There's actually a couple subs. RJ Melendez as well uh, played in that game as a sub. So there's two people that played in that game for Illinois that are going to be back tonight or Thursday as this game goes on. So it's a very interesting Illinois team. We're going to talk about more in depth here in a minute. When you look at Ken Palm, IU still comes in at 28th. Illinois is 21st, though. So it's a Illini team that, I mean, largely speaking, they don't have a bad loss. They, they may be 13-5 and five on the season, but their losses are neutral site to Virginia at Maryland for the Big Ten ACC Challenge, I believe. Uh, then to Penn State at home. The Hoosiers know how tough Penn State is. Missouri at a neutral site, Northwestern on the road. So it's a 
the, none of those are bad. The, the lowest ranked team is Missouri at a neutral site, which they did lose that game by 22 points. But largely speaking, this is still a tested Illinois team, which is why Ken Palm favors them by four points, but gives them a 66% chance of winning the game. So this is going to be a really uphill battle for Indiana. As much as they looked improved against Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin without their leading scorer is a lot different than Illinois and, and how they're playing right now. So it's going to be a tough challenge for the Hoosiers. Uh, Bet Online, as we said, has Indiana as a uh, seven point underdog. Ken Palm's a little bit more favorable, but the Hoosiers just haven't really played all that well this conference season so far. And sitting at two and four indicates that. If you look at just their Ken Palm um, stats for Big Ten play, they're, they're just a team that hasn't played very well. They turn the ball over a lot, uh, at least they have in in conference play. They've been an efficient offense, fourth, but they rank seventh in uh, – or eighth, excuse me, in defensive efficiency – they're shooting the three decently well. They're fourth, fifth, and two-point percentage. Uh, they're not making free throws, and they're not really stopping teams from scoring how they need to. Like I said, they're giving up. They rank 13th in steal percentage offensively, so they're giving up a lot of live ball turnovers and not getting many. And then they're 13th in three-pointers per field goal attempted. So they might be shooting the three well, but they're just not – they don't have the volume right now. A lot of that might uh, be influenced by how poorly they played in those three games, but that's half the conference schedule right now. So we'll see if what they did against Wisconsin is kind of the new Indiana. Let's talk about this Illinois team, though. Who's leading them with all these new faces and what their team looks like? We'll do that here in a moment. First, though, you guys know how much we love Built Bars around here. And if you guys are looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all the fat and calories, you got to try Built Bar. I'm sure a lot of people have New Year's resolutions to eat healthier. Built Bar can help you do that. And you know what? You don't even have to fool around with ordering it online and waiting and doing the ridiculous shipping and handling and processing fees, whatever it is, because Built Bars are at Walmart and Sam's Club. You can head out today, wherever your closest Walmart, closest Sam's Club is. Everybody is close to a Walmart now. Head there. You can find Built Bars in four bar boxes of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. If you have a Sam's Club around, I know they're there as well. I've seen them there. It's a 13-bar box. They have the hits with brownie batter and churro. So you guys can head out, find some of those, and thank me later. Make sure you guys go try Built today, though. They are absolutely incredible. Let's look at this Illinois team. And just, I mean, if you compare them year over year and just look at last year's team versus this year's, it is wild how much difference there is. Kofi Coburn, gone. Alfonso Plummer, gone. Trent Frazier, Jacob Grandison, Andre Corbello. That's their top five leading scorers, gone. Coleman Hawkins was their leading returning scorer, at 5.9 points. Uh, he's taken a little bit of a step forward this year, 9.7 points, but it's a lot of new fa new faces doing the heavy lifting this season. Terrence Shannon at 17.6 pro points per game uh, after transferring in this season. He is the leading scorer for this team, was at Texas Tech last year. Matthew Mayer is at 11.1 .1 points per game. He's shooting 37.4% uh, for the fighting Illini. Uh, another senior that transferred in from Baylor last season. It, it's all, just a whole lot of new faces. Jaden Epps is the one, the freshman, that probably has taken the biggest uh, chunk of the minutes left by um, Sky Clark's kind of departure from the team. But there's just a whole host of new people stepping into this one. 
It is Terrence Shannon leading the way, 17.6 points, 5.7 rebounds. He's shooting 32% from three on 96 attempts. So he's going to shoot a lot. He hasn't really been efficient this season. As a team, they're only shooting 33.1% from three. If you kind of look at their offensive profile, we'll focus on Big Ten play because I think we're kind of at a point where we have a good enough sample size. They've played seven Big Ten games. So when you look at how they've played in Big Ten play this season, 13th in three-point percentage. They have not shot the ball well. Now they're going to be home, probably a pretty fired-up crowd. I don't know how much that's going to track. You know that uh, role players play better at home. We'll see if that's going to be the case. Where they've excelled is they are first in two-point percentage at 53.1%. They are first in both in block percentage offensively and defensively which means they are not getting their shots blocked and they are blocking opponent shots. Defensively, they rank fourth in efficiency in the Big Ten, second in effective field goal percentage defensively, so teams are not making shots against them. They defend inside the arc very well. They're slightly above average defending the three. Uh, they, Where they struggle is they do put teams on the line a lot, Unfortunately, that's just not really an area where Indiana can take advantage based on what they've done this season. They might be able to get to the line, but the Hoosiers don't make free throws. So, And they also are going to have to drive to the rim to get to the line most likely, and Indiana doesn't really do that without Xavier Johnson on the floor. So this is a team that um, – an Illinois team that is decent defensively in the, the area they struggle – Indiana's not really uh, primed to take advantage of that. They also don't turn teams over much. They're 10th in turnover percentage defensively. Again, though, Indiana's kind of been giving the ball away. So it's not a great matchup for the Hoosiers. Uh, It's going to be interesting to see what type of Indiana team comes out in this game. It's hard to look at Indiana's stats because – Saturday was such a deviation from where they had played in the previous five uh, conference games before that, and specifically that three-game run of Iowa, Northwestern, Penn State. That was really bad, and I don't, we don't need to rehash that, but it was just a vastly different IU team on Saturday. As much as I believe that that could be a turning point for Indiana, they got to prove it, and they haven't exactly given us a lot of reasons to kind of blindly put faith in them with how they've played this season. So the biggest key for me is that you just got to bring that level of intensity that they had on Saturday again. That was defensively the biggest thing. It's just the level of focus and intensity that they played with allowed them to really stifle Wisconsin's attack uh, they weren't overhelping. They weren't leaving shooters open. They were keeping guys in front of them, most importantly. And when they were able to do all those things, you were getting defensive stops. And then you could turn around and execute on the other end. To that point, movement offensively is going to be key. What they did in the second half against Wisconsin is what they need to focus on more than what they did in the first half against Wisconsin. But movement offensively is uh, paramount to success for Indiana, especially if you throw the ball into Trace. Do not stand there and watch him cut through the middle of the lane, move off the ball. He's a great passer. He's going to find guys. You just have to put yourself in a position to be found. Too often Indiana is just standing around on the perimeter. If you're not moving, you're very easy to defend. And it's very easy for the opponent to also defend or keep a foot in the paint against Trace Jackson Davis if they know that they're, if the IU player is just going to stand there. So IU becomes a very easy team to defend when everybody's just standing around looking at Trace. Jordan Geronimo, how he plays is going to be a focus. Struggled a lot in that kind of losing streak. Was really, really good against Wisconsin. IU need something closer to that really, really good Jordan Geronimo uh, than the one that played against Iowa and against Northwestern that struggled so much. If he's really, really good, then 
I feel a lot better about this Hoosier team. There's still things race uh, brought to the table that can't be replaced, especially defensively. But if you're bringing the execution and the intensity that Jordan Geronimo did, effort covers up a lot of mistakes. And too often, IU didn't really have any effort, especially defensively, and the mistakes were very loud as a result. Production from the guard rotation as well. Jalen hood Shafino has been really good, all things considered, without Xavier Johnson. Continuing to get production from him. Is his jumper going to stay hot, especially as it was the second half against Wisconsin? He had a steady diet of those mid-range jumpers. Did he find a bit of a groove there? But also, Tamar Bates, you need him to step back up again. Has kind of struggled since that game against Kennesaw State where – we campaigned for him to get into the starting lineup, and he got into the starting lineup. He struggled since then. Could use another big game from him. Uh, same goes for Trey Galloway, who's kind of hot and cold. First half against um, Wisconsin wasn't great. I thought he played a lot better in the second half. So getting that type of production is going to be really big for the Hoosiers. This is a winnable game. And this, if they can come away and win this game, I'll feel a whole lot better about IU moving forward. This is also a really tough game, though. Going on the road in the Big Ten is a difficult task. Doing it as undermanned as IU ultimately is, which, again, is I think something you have to keep in mind. This is still a very undermanned IU team. So I'm willing to overlook some execution errors, if Indiana is putting in the effort, it's when they're not putting in the effort and they're not executing that I'm not willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. If you try hard, if you compete and you fall up short in that regard, we can live with it and move on. Elsewise, you're just kind of wasting everyone's time. And I don't think anybody wants that, particularly Mike Woodson and that coaching staff. So we'll see if Saturday was a turning point for Indiana or just kind of a flash in the pan. We'll be back here on Thursday night to discuss whatever happens in the Illinois game, win or lose. Make sure you guys are subscribed over on YouTube. Make sure you follow us on Twitter as well so you get all the latest updates from us, including when we go live with that episode. But thanks again, guys, for making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen every day. We'll be back with that recap and a preview of the weekend's action for both the men's and women's team. For your second listen, check out the brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Experts Isaac Shade and Andy Patton bring you everything you need to know on and off the court. Uh, whether it is big name experts, coaches, players, everything throughout the basketball landscape, they have you covered at Locked On College Basketball. Available on YouTube and wherever you get podcasts. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to the podcast, leave a rating and review, all of that great stuff. Most importantly, though, guys, big shout out again to Terry Morin and the women's basketball team. Let's see the men's team match that tonight. Go Hoosiers, and as always, Elio.